Hey everyone, today I want to share a few tips with those of you interested in creating add-ons for Cascader. We will begin by looking at how to make our script appear inside the software under the commands menu. Then we'll explore accessing commands remotely from the CLI. And by the end of this video, we'll combine everything we've learned to set up VS Code so we are able to run our command or script directly from the editor. And if you stay with me until the end, I'll show you how to install external Python modules. Let's get started. You can find every command or add-on under the commands menu in the UI. These are the scripts that you can find inside your Cascader install folder in resources, scripts, Python commands menu. So I will open the commands folder inside VS Code and I can create a new file here. Let's call it my command.py and every cascader add-on should contain two functions. First we will need a command name function and this function should return a string that will be the name of the command. Let's call it my command and it also needs a second run function that receives the scene object you can use the scene object to different things i have a separate video about this and this run function will be executed when you click the command in the ui so let's simply just print out something like scene.info so let's save this file and now if we reload Cascader this command should appear under the commands menu. So let's see commands and this is my command and it prints out what we set. If you want to create submenus like you can see here the center of mass collision you can do it by using dot notation in your command name. I will save it, restart Cascader again, and now after restarting Cascader we can see a My Command submenu. Now let's see how we can execute this script from the CLI. One thing that is really useful is that you can run this commands file from the CLI. This can be extremely powerful if you want to interact with Cascader from outside or integrate Cascader to your workflow. And this is also quite simple. You need to call the Cascader executable with the run script option. So I will open a command line and first we will need the full path of the Cascader executable. I will copy paste it here and after that that we need to put the run script option and then we need to provide which command we want to execute so so let's run our newly created command which is inside the command submodule i named the file my command and if we execute it this will print out my command and you can see that the packages were reloaded so if i now change what should i print out and then we run again our command this will be updated know that you don't need the file extension at the end and if your command is in a subfolder like the add at cube function then you can call the command like so and this will add a cube before we get into setting up VS Code, it's a good idea to store our commands in a custom directory. This way we can separate them from the default scripts. So I created a new empty folder on my D drive and let's move our command to this new folder. In order to Cascader know about this folder, we need to go back to the resources folder under the Cascader install folder and there is a settings.json file. We need to open it and first we need to add the path where the directory of scripts or add-ons is located. So it's the parent directory. So in our case this will be the cascader and we also need to use forward slashes here instead of backward slashes and put it inside quotation marks. Then in the command section we need to add the name of the directory after the command separated by a comma. So this will be add-ons. And now if I restart Cascader, I still see the commands, but it's in a different location. Of course, you can run these commands from CLI, but instead of commands, you need to use the correct directory name. So in this case, it will be addons.mycommand. 
And now we know everything to set up VS Code so we can run our command from the editor. And basically we will use this CLI command to do so. I will show you my actual setup that works for me. If you have a better idea, I'm curious to hear. So in my case, I have a folder where I have different repositories for the things I'm working on. Because of that, I set up the settings JSON by defining this parent folder and there are the different submodules. So each of this is a separate directory in the Cascader add-ons folder. To be able to execute a custom script when we are clicking this play button, we can use the code runner plugin. You can download it from the extensions. And first we need to configure it. I will do it for only the workspace and I have to do it in JSON format. First we need to set up a bash command. And in my case, I will run a run command Python file that we will create soon. And we will pass the parameter of the file we are executing. And there are also two other options that I like to set. I want to run it in a terminal, so I set this one to true. And you can also define if you want to execute the selected code only or the whole file. Now we need to create this run command file, so I will create it in the main folder, the parent directory. I will provide a link for the settings JSON and this code also in the description. So this is the script where we are building the CLI command that we want to execute. First we have the executable of Cascadar. Then from the argument we are passing to this file in the settings JSON, which is the full file name. We are splitting it into different files. So there will be the script file at the end and the last folder before the script file. For example, the last folder here would be key reduction and the script name will be uniform reduction. So when we build a command as a string, I use suppressors popen to execute it. Let's test it out with one of the sample files. So let's try out the uniform reduction. And now if we click run code, it will execute this command. And what's really great about this is that we can just simply change the script, save the file, and when we run the code, it will automatically update. That's because when we are running a command from the CLI, the packages are reloaded. One thing that's really important is that we are using the Python command to run this file, this run command file. So you need to make sure that you have Python installed on your system. And finally, let's see how we can install Python modules for Cascader. For this, make sure that you have pip available on your system because that's what we will need to use. So normally when you install a Python module, you would use the pip install and the name of the module. This would install the module for the default Python interpreter, but we want to make it available for the Cascader Python interpreter. For this, pip has a lot of handy options, which we will use. If we check the Cascader install folder, Python, lib, site packages, you will see that NumPy is already available here as an external module. So this is the place where we want to install our modules. So I will copy this path and we can define in our command the target by using the target option. We also can define the Python version because Cascader might have a different Python version from the version on your system. You can check which Python version is available for in Cascader if you import the sys module and print out the sys.version. And you can see that currently Python version 3.11 is what's used by Cascader. So we can define the Python version. 3.11.0 and finally we need the module as binaries which can be defined with the only binary option and it should be set to all. 
If we execute it, it will collect the modules, download it, and once the package is installed correctly, you can check that the module is available in the site packages folder. And now if you restart Cascader again, we can try out if importing the module is successful or not. So I will open a new Python console and import cp execute there is no error here if i would try something like requests then it would say that the module is not available now the last thing we would need is intellisense for code completion unfortunately it is currently not possible but the devs are working on it and hopefully we will see a solution for that sooner or later so these are the most important things in my opinion you would need for creating add-ons if you learned something from this video i would really appreciate if you leave a like and a comment these python related videos perform even worse than I expected. Nevertheless, I enjoyed exploring it and if just a couple of you found it useful, it was worth it.